Hey guys, how's it going? It's Andy from Magoo Investing. Happy Friday. Today's video, instead of talking about a couple stocks, we're going to be talking about a bunch of different overall stock market topics. There's been a lot of news stories that have been coming out in the past week, and there are some things I really wanted to talk about. So in today's video, we're mainly going to focus on a couple reasons why I'm pretty scared that there's going to be a stock market crash part two. I know I made a video talking about this a couple weeks ago, but there's more information that keeps coming out. And as this information gets released, the stock market continues to push higher and it looks like we're getting towards a, a potential bubble. So I wanted to talk about some of those reasons. And then there was an article talking about the dangers of Robinhood and some of the trends that uh, the people of the New York Times had been seeing with those investors. And I wanted to talk about that and some of the beaten down stocks that are staying afloat because Robinhood investors or traders are putting their money into these stocks and keeping them afloat instead of normally after you declare bankruptcy, these stock goes to zero pretty quickly. And we're not seeing that in a couple pretty popular stocks on the platform. Before getting started, I do want to say that I'm not a licensed financial advisor and this is not financial advice. Anything you hear in this video is just my own opinions on the stock market and you need to do your own research before taking any position in the stock market. Also, if you've been enjoying these videos, I really appreciate it. You hit the like and subscribe button as it would help my channel out a lot. We're getting pretty close to 5,000 subscribers, so thank you all for that. Okay, one of the biggest factors that could go towards a potential stock market crash is the pandemic. I'm not going to talk about it a lot, but based off of the trends that we've been seeing in the United States, I don't think this is going to get better anytime soon. But the market seems to kind of just be shrugging off that information. So I wanted to talk about some, some economic data or some larger news stories that I think could be uh, pushing the market towards a potential crash. One of the news stories that popped up in the past couple days is the fact that for the month of July, 32% of homeowners did not pay their housing payment. And so as a result, we're getting towards the end of the eviction protection that came from the CARES Act. And so what that means is we're going to have a lot of people that are going to be in a really tough spot when it comes to housing. 32% or almost one third of Americans did not pay their full housing payment in the month of July. And that's been pretty steady over the past couple months. And so as we're getting towards the end of this, and one of the big things that I was watching from my other video about a potential market crash is the fact that at the end of the month, we're going to be running out of the additional unemployment benefits that were part of the CARES Act. And so what this means is people are going to be in a really tough spot when it comes to having to work outside the home during the middle of a pandemic. And so people are going to be forced to make a decision that's kind of a really horrible decision overall. They're going to have to decide about their, their health of their family and the ability to put food on the table and to avoid being evicted. And so I think we're going to see some really tough numbers from the uh, unemployment numbers and some of the housing numbers in the month of uh, August as the CARES Act sets to expire for the unemployment benefits at the end of the month. So this deadline towards the end of this month is one of the main reasons why I decided to kind of be pretty conservative with my portfolio. As I've mentioned in the last video, I had a lot of my money sitting in cash because I was pretty worried about the overall stock market. While most of my money is tied up at this point, I decided to sell short-term options because I wanted to have expirations that were within 10 days and the fact that it's going to expire before the, uh, the CARES Act runs out for the unemployment benefits, which is when I think we're going to start seeing some bad things in the market. So I put myself for some short-term exposure to take advantage of some of the market moves that we've been seeing, but I've been trying to limit my overall risk by minimizing the days of exposure to the overall stock market. But what I think is probably the most interesting topic about the overall stock market is the crazy level of divergence that we've seen between the NASDAQ and the rest of the market. For people that don't know, the NASDAQ is a index that follows many of the large tech stocks on the New York Stock Exchange. And so the NASDAQ has been, historically, it does better than the Dow Jones. When I put up the all-time returns for the NASDAQ compared to the Dow Jones, you can see that there's a huge difference between the two but I wanted to talk about the recent performance of the NASDAQ compared to the Dow Jones. Obviously the Dow Jones has a lot of beaten down stocks, stuff like Boeing, we had Walgreens Boots Alliance announce their earnings and they posted a $1.7 billion loss and they had to freeze their stock buyback. So the stock tanked because of that. And so I realized that when you have only 30 stocks compared to a lot more in the NASDAQ, uh, some of the fluctuations are gonna be a lot larger in the Dow. But what we've been seeing recently is a incredible level of divergence of over 30% between the returns of the Dow Jones and the NASDAQ. And what this means to me is that investors are pulling their money out of the, what were the safe places in the Dow Jones from the companies that have a lot of exposure to the virus overall, and they're putting their money into tech, which is not something that we've seen in past recessions. In the past, I've made videos talking about recession-proof stocks, and one of the places that I talked about was Visa. 
One of the main ideas behind Visa is that they were a giant in the payment industry, and in the past recessions, the transaction volume hasn't dipped that low during a recession. And as a result of the company not doing that much in lending so they don't have to worry about delinquency with their loans, it was a pretty safe spot. And we're not seeing some of the traditional safe spots of um, consumer staple products like Coca-Cola, ticker symbol KO, or even gold. And we're seeing the flux of money going from uh, some of the Dow Jones companies and into tech stocks, which is not something I would have expected before the pandemic. But at this point, we are seeing record levels of differences between the Dow Jones and the NASDAQ. When I put up the all-time chart, there's a couple areas where I'm kind of looking at that look pretty similar. The first one is right now. And when I zoom in for 2020, or the past 12 months actually, there's a 30% difference between the performance of these two areas, which is massive for the overall stock market. And so when we look at that and then compare it to the dot-com bubble bursting of around 2000, we can see that there was a much larger difference. For people that don't know, the dot-com bubble was a result of venture capital flooding into these tech companies that were not profitable. And there was just such a, so much momentum behind these tech stocks, they were pushed up so high that they were not able to succeed. And when the overall bubble burst, the market crashed and a lot of these tech stocks went under. And so we're seeing pretty similar things where money is flooding into these tech companies that many of them aren't profitable. And so I'm seeing that as a potential bubble and one of the main reasons why I'm pretty worried about the stock market overall. And then I wanted to talk about two stocks that have just been killing it recently and which make me feel like we're in a potential bubble. And those two stocks are gonna be Tesla, ticker symbol TSLA, and Nikola, ticker symbol NKLA. These are two automotive companies that are mainly reliant on tech because they are electric car companies. And we've been seeing some crazy momentum behind these stocks in the past couple months. When I put up the all-time chart for Tesla, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when you look at this? I'll give you a couple seconds to really, to look at it. For me, the first thing that I think of is there's no way this is sustainable. In recent times, the movement of the stock has been ridiculous. In the past couple years, you've seen some fluctuations and it looks like a pretty normal stock. But the fact that it pushed up to almost a thousand before the pandemic, crashed and then rebounded even stronger and now it's sitting around $1,400 a share is absolutely ridiculous. And I don't think it's super sustainable. What I'll be watching is in the past, Tesla was a heavily shorted company because people didn't believe in the product and the stock, what they expected was that it was going to fall out of the sky. But we're seeing record numbers of short sellers coming in again. We had a record bet of $20 billion shorting against Tesla because people think it's so overextended. And when I look at that stock price again, I kind of have to agree with them. I think it's a fantastic company with a great product, but I don't think you can justify a increase from $200 12 months ago to $1,400 in the span of around a year, which is just ridiculous for how quickly it's rose over time. And while Tesla's had three positive earnings in the past, we're not seeing the same thing with stuff like Nikola, which is a company that has a higher valuation than places like Ford, which are well-established, have been here for over 100 years. The problem with Nikola, and one of the reasons why I'm pretty worried about it overall, is the crazy increase in price that we've seen over the past couple months, and the fact that they have no money actually coming in. So in the past three months, Nikola stock has gone up 410%. And do they have any sales to back this up? No, they announced reservations for their Badger, which is their truck that they're coming out with. And the reservations, uh, you had to put some money down between $250 and the $5,000 package. And Nikola has not come out and announced how many people actually reserved their spot. And the only thing they tweeted is that they ran out of the $5,000 packages. But if you look at the fine print on their website, you'll see that all of these reservations are 100% refundable until the shipping date. What this means is they have no guaranteed income at this point, and it's just a lot of hype and speculation behind these stocks. And when I think of hype and speculation, I go back to the 2000.com uh, bubble. And we're seeing this crazy level of increase, 400% in three months, with no actual sales and being valued over some of these massive companies like Ford. And so overall, I'm getting pretty scared about the overall stock market because speculative stocks have just kind of become the norm when it comes to places that people are putting their money during a pandemic, which is not something I would have expected a couple months ago. Instead of putting their money into the reliable safe places like consumer staple products, Visa, gold, people are going to the very overextended tech industry. And as a result, the NASDAQ is pulling super far away from the Dow Jones, which worries me a lot because as I mentioned, it looks very similar to the dot-com bubble bursting. And so some of the things I'll be watching going forward, one is the divergence between the NASDAQ and the Dow. Two is the report of people not paying their housing payments in the month of July at around 32%. I'm gonna be watching the unemployment benefits running out towards the end of the month. 
And then finally, we're having record numbers of the virus popping up in the United States. So those are gonna be the four things I'm gonna be watching going forward as a potential reason for a stock market crash. Overall, I'm not fully bearish on the stock market yet, as if I had to judge my overall investor sentiment, it's getting pretty close to neutral. I still have a lot of money put into the stock market, so I'm not fully bearish, but I'm starting to get pretty wary and I'm pretty scared about a potential crash in the upcoming months. And then I wanted to wrap this video talking up about Robinhood because in the past couple years, there has not been a lot of focus on these smaller investors, people like myself. But when the pandemic hit, we're hitting these major news outlets reporting on the tendencies of investors on Robinhood. While I'm no longer really on Robinhood, I kind of put myself in that same mindset as a smaller investor. But this article from the New York Times talked about this man that took $15,000 in credit card loans and then pushed that into a million dollars and then took out 60 grand in credit card advances and then he went from a million dollars down to six grand. And while this feels like it belongs on a place like Wall Street Bets, it seems pretty common for what we're seeing with the overall market and the investors on Robinhood, with people being very risky with their overall trades. And so this chart from the article really stuck out to me. It's the fact that Robinhood traders on average have a hundred times more options traded compared to the major places like TD Ameritrade, Fidelity, Schwab. And so people on Robinhood are taking riskier bets and it's kind of pushing the stock market up in a very interesting way. And we've seen this with a lot of the beaten down stocks, stuff like Hertz, Chesapeake Energy, ticker symbol CHK, and a lot of the airline industry, which has become the most popular stocks on Robinhood overall. One of the most interesting places we've seen this has been with Hertz, a company that declared bankruptcy over a month ago. And normally when a company declares bankruptcy, investors pull out because they know it's gonna go towards zero pretty soon. However, Hertz has been somehow staying afloat. And just at the end of May, the stock was trading for 40 cents. And then the middle of June, it was up around $6 for an increase of 1,400%. This is mainly because of traders on Robinhood are artificially pushing up the stock price. And we saw some news events coming from that that I had never expected to see before. Hertz got the go ahead to sell extra shares onto the stock market to try to increase some of the money that they're bringing in to pay off their creditors, which is something that I had never expected to see of a company that's already declared bankruptcy. And while they ended up not doing that, the fact that Hertz is still afloat at over a dollar right now is shocking to me. And so when we go to robintrack.net, which is a way that you can see the ownership compared to the stock price, you can see that as Hertz fell, the percentage of Robinhood owners that bought it spiked. It's, that, it's so against the common thoughts of investing to buy into a bankrupt stock. But at this point, it is the 50 most popular stock on Robinhood and it is bankrupt. So that's fascinating. If you're one of these people that are taking these risky bets, I would highly recommend staying away from them because while things are going well right now, it probably will not stay that way forever. So just be careful out there. So overall, that was my video from today. We talked about some of the dangers that I'm seeing in the overall stock market and why I'm worried about a potential stock market crash part two. And then I finished up the video with a kind of interesting article from the New York Times talking about the quote unquote dangers of Robinhood. Obviously Robinhood has its pros and cons, but the way that people on the platform have been trading recently has been fascinating. It has been kind of very interesting with the way that the stock market has been moving as a result of that. So let me know what you guys thought about this video overall, and let me know what stocks you guys are watching going forward in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching, wear a mask, and I will see you on Monday.